You know, New Orleans jazz, we think of New Orleans jazz, we think of Second Line, we think of Preservation Hall, we think of the, the brass bands. And then that evolved into like, you know, for me it was John Coltrane, Miles Davis, and, and people that I really didn't like or understand because it just seemed so heady. It just seemed way above my understanding of, I was like, where are the people that's dancing? Where's the, where are the lyrics? Where's the, you know what I mean? But what attracted me to it was that it was complicated. I had a teacher that told me, he said, don't come, don't come from it, don't come to the music trying to learn how to do it. Approach John Coltrane the way you would approach a Picasso painting. Just look at it, admire it, and then move on. And then maybe you'll start to see, now these lines are starting to kind of make sense together. Pace yourself, take your time, while you're listening to it. And then it became a music, once I started really getting into the history of it, it became a more of a, that idea of it being a feeling with it also. So being able to feel it and being able to understand it. I mean, it, it, I mean, every day is just constantly evolving for me. This music is a living, breathing organism. Primarily in this concert, I play the upright bass, which is sort of the big wooden thing that sits in the middle of uh, the ensemble behind the piano. My job during this performance was to establish uh, a strong bass, no pun intended, for rhythm and harmony. Uh, so making sure that the group plays in time and in tune at the same time. What it's really about is balance with the rhythm section and the piano playing the melody and the band. What, that's what I'm really trying to get to. Right now, I feel like everything's just at this volume of loudness right now. And I want, you, I want this rhythm section to really feel the dance of this. Really try to feel this dance. Everybody try to feel this dance. Da, 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 da. So I started on upright bass in Shanghai. I was one of the only kids uh, in the fifth grade that was, that was tall enough to actually hold the smallest bass in the orchestra. And I started an orchestra and then a year after I moved back to the United States. Uh, and I started in a, in a concert band, and then a year later, in the seventh grade, when I was about 13, my band director put an electric bass in my hand and started me in jazz band. I've been a member of the jazz band since I started here at Davidson. When I got my school email, uh, leeaken at davidson.edu, uh, I remember I was on a road trip with my grandfather, and I was in an RV in Arizona, and the first person I ever emailed using my Davidson email was Doc. I didn't know what I wanted to study, what I wanted to major in. I didn't even know who I wanted to live with, where I wanted to live, what classes I wanted to take, but I knew I wanted to be a part of jazz band. One of the things that I have a hard time with as a piano player is looking like I'm getting ready to play the piano when I play. I've been told that sometimes I slouch too much. Sometimes I, you know, cross my feet when I play. I do all kinds of funny things, you know. You know, there's no way that you'll be able to swing like this. This music, just like funk and R&B and hip hop and all of that stuff, it's all a dance music first. <laughs> Here's my idea of what jazz sounds like. Ah! Do, 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 uh, do, uh.
Any ideas of what I was doing? What are the elements that were there? So I went based on what I was feeling. Coming into Davidson, it was actually kind of my first exposure to real jazz music. Um, and at first it was a little weird because I'd never been exposed to like playing music of this caliber. Uh, and it was definitely above my skill level coming in. Um, but you know, with, with hard work and um, getting used to it, you come to really appreciate this kind of music. And it, it's really something that I had not experienced before coming here. <laughs> I, I usually get pretty excited that week uh, that the special guest is going to come. When we first meet them, it's always super exciting. I like hearing their first impressions about what they think of the group, what they think of jazz and how we should be playing. And then obviously the day of the concert, you know, it's, it's, it's great uh, showing up and the special guest gets, you know, they get dressed up and they get ready to go and then you tend to hear them. Uh, usually they'll solo for an extended period of time and I love hearing solos. Playing the concert was obviously a great treat. Uh, I got to sit for most most of it and just listen to how the band sounded and how you know how Sullivan Fortner played. Um, his solo on Nostalgia in Times Square was incredible and breathtaking and just absolutely just grimy, like uh, dirty organ solo. Just a ton of fun to watch. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the concert. I think that we got a good program. I think that we, we're covering a lot of bass. We're doing Duke Ellington. We're doing some Count Basie. We're doing some Oliver Nelson, Herbie Hancock. I hope that um, the people who listen to it enjoy it as much as we'll enjoy playing it for them. Thank <laughs> you.